at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning with high inflation affecting consumers and businesses, the Fed's expected to signal today that we'll soon raise interest rates. Outside with live cam hovering around 50, but we've got a breeze out there, so it feels a little cooler than that. So plan accordingly. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to midweek. It is Wednesday, the 26th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, a little cool out there, but it was beautiful yesterday. Not bad. The clouds kind of rolled back in. It did get cooler later in the day. Mike's here with more on what to expect for our hump day. Going to keep a lot of clouds hanging around here. Once again, we got a little couple of patches of fog, nothing like what we had yesterday. And it's that, again, that kind of dampish mm -hmm. chill. You know, it's not bone chilling. Temperatures are very mild, about 10 above normal, but then you have all the humidity out there. And yeah, a lot clearer in this picture than the, what we had yesterday, but still have a couple little hints of fog. Um, some around New Braunfels, Hondo, Kerrville, and that's pretty much about it. Some up there around Junction, but just be kind of on the lookout for, again, a, a couple of patches here and there, but like I said, nothing like yesterday. 50 in town, Randolph, upper 40s, mid upper 40s in portions of the Hill Country. And these numbers, although still below 60, the point temperatures, so it's still technically comfortable out there as far as the, the humidity is concerned. Uh, it's still high compared to the temperature, so it is, again, that sort of damp chill. Mold and Mountain Cedar are both on the low side, and throughout the rest of today, we're going to stay pretty steady with these temperatures right around where they are now, maybe fluctuating a couple of degrees, a patch or two of fog one or two of them here and there and then 55 for a high temperature today. So that's going to be it. Plenty of clouds hanging around here. Get used to seeing that number for the next couple of days. Maybe a couple of showers. Not a great rain event at all. And then we're still setting up for a beautiful weekend. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. There are new details in a deadly shooting that happened at a local Martin Luther King Jr. gathering. Witnesses are sharing what they saw moments before those shots were fired. Those details released the same day a suspect was arrested in the case. 18-year-old Old Wallace didn't say much as he walked past our cameras, but an affidavit is shedding some light on the case. In it, a mother told police she recognized Wallace from an apartment complex where she used to live. She told police Wallace was walking suspiciously with a gun under his left arm before he started shooting. Police say they still don't know why Wallace fired into a crowd outside a bar on Spriggsdale. Five people were shot, one of them died. Now to a crucial decision today that the markets will be watching closely. Wall Street has been on a roller coaster lately with wild swings up and down. Today, the Federal Reserve is expected to take action. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the details. This morning, a major change likely to come to your money. The Federal Reserve is expected to announce it's raising interest rates for the first time in three years in response to soaring inflation and an overheated economy. Let's not get too nervous. Rates are still historically low. They're near zero percent, but it could be enough to, to rattle investors uh, and consumers. The rate hike would come as soon as March. Some economists say the Fed is moving too late to fight inflation. Others say there's a risk the Fed could act too aggressively. Well, that will eventually stabilize prices for consumers. It also increases the cost of borrowing and makes it less desirable to buy risky things like stocks for people here on Wall Street. And that has led to this volatile market we've seen recently. Overnight, stock futures were up slightly after another volatile day on Wall Street. The Dow plunging 800 points at one point. It's the degree of sensitivity that market participants have uh, to what is going to be the new rate environment. Experts say supply chain issues are another factor the Fed is considering before raising rates. And when you're dealing with shortages of semiconductors, making the economy go slower is not the best way, right, to actually address those kinds of issues, those kinds of shortages. Across the country, the supply of crucial semiconductors is now alarmingly low, according to a Commerce Department survey. It found companies using the computer chips are down to fewer than five days of inventory, a sharp drop from the 40 days of inventory that were typical in 2019. The auto industry has been hit hard by the chip shortage. But General Motors Tuesday announcing the single largest investment in the company's history. It's pouring nearly $7 billion into electric car and battery production at sites in Michigan. As for interest rates, some experts predict the Fed could raise rates as many as four times this year to curb inflation. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. 
U.S. Representative Henry Cuellar says he took part in no wrongdoing after FBI agents last week searched near his home. The nine-term Democrat said in a video posted that he was fully cooperating with law enforcement but provided no details. Cuellar hasn't been charged with a crime and the FBI has said nothing about the scope of its investigation. Cuellar serves on the powerful House Appropriations Committee. He was outspoken in blaming National Democrats' move to the left during the 2020 campaign on issues like health care and the environment as contributing to some disappointing losses in the U.S. House. U.S. Coast Guard rescue crews are searching for 39 people after a boat capsized Saturday night off the coast of Florida. A Good Samaritan told authorities he rescued a man who was clinging to a capsized boat about 45 miles east of Fort Pierce Inlet. The survivor said he had left the Bahamas with 39 other people Saturday night. They encountered severe weather, which caused the vessel to capsize. He said no one on board was wearing a life jacket. Coast Guard officials believe it was human smuggling attempt. They are searching the water for possible survivors. David Ortiz joining the National Baseball Hall of Fame. The former Red Sox star known as Big Poppy was elected Tuesday during his first year of eligibility. Ortiz was the World Series MVP back in 2013. During those games, he had a jaw dropping batting average of 688. He also helped the Red Sox win the World Series in 04 and 07. Two former stars notably did not make into the hall this year. Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens. This was their last year of eligibility, but rumors of performance enhancing drugs appear to have lost them the honor. Both Bonds and Clemens are now no longer eligible for election to the Hall of Fame unless a special committee brings their names back up at a later date. 436, about 50 degrees. Coming up next, a big win for the Spurs last night in Houston. We're going to have some highlights next. About time. I know. I'm excited about that. Traffic right now, it's awfully early. We always say that. Uh, very light traffic and no incident showing up on these cameras right now. But that could change in the blink of an eye. And we'll keep an eye on it for you. Steven joins us coming up in our next half hour. And taking a look outside with live cam, a mild 50 degrees out there, but still a little chilly for the morning. Go ahead and grab that jacket. We'll be right back. Just about 4.40, DeJounte Murray and the Spurs needed a win badly last night, and the table was set in Houston as the Silver and Black took on the struggling Houston Rockets. Spurs catch fire late in the first quarter. DeJounte wide open for the straightaway three. That cuts the Rockets' lead down to three. A little later on, Keldon Johnson from behind the arc connects, and the Spurs take the lead 25-23 in the end. Murray and Jakob Pertl combined for 37 points in three quarters to help the Spurs coast to a 134-104 victory over the Rockets. A 39-point third quarter put the game out of reach on a night San Antonio scored a season-high 82 points in the paint and shot a season-high 57.4%. Win comes after the Spurs drop consecutive games to Brooklyn and Philly at home. San Antonio's 82 points in the paint is tied with the Grizzlies for the most in the NBA this season. And it's the second most the Spurs have had since the year 2000. 11 of the 12 Spurs scored at least two baskets and eight ended in double figures. San Antonio was also six for six on free throws. Yeah, I think we're disappointed with the result against Philadelphia. So showed a little bit today. I think there was a little bit more urgency to us. Um, and yeah, we managed to find a rhythm early in the game and it really carried over for for the rest of the game. Next up, Spurs back home to welcome the Grizzlies to town. Tip off tonight, 730 over at the AT&T Center. Well, now to some girls high school hoops district 28-6A Brandeis taking on Johnson in a critical battle for playoff position. Broncos looking to rally late in the third inbounds pass to Alexis Parker for the hoop and the foul. Parker had a team high 34 points. Brandeis cuts the lead down to 13 midway through the fourth. But Johnson enters nice ball movement. Finds Sierra McDermott in the corner for the three and she hits it. Jags pull away to win it 79 to 61. Same district Paul Taylor Fieldhouse Churchill taking on Clark Lake second Cougars turning defense to o offense. Ariana Roberson with the block. Caitlin Whitlock picks up the loose ball and takes the distance for the lay on 37 21 Cougars. Then a few plays later Whitlock returns the favor finding Roberson with a long pass for the land. Clark stays perfect in district play 66 to 35. And that's a look at morning sports. All right, time now 441 and 50 degrees out there. If you have old phones or laptops lying around the house, they could be worth some money. Coming up next, we're going to explain how to trade it in for cash. And next, why Australia is reversing its ban on T-shirts, drawing attention to chop a top Chinese tennis player. 
And welcome back. It's about 4.45 now. The Australian Open has reversed its ban on spectators wearing t-shirts in support of a Chinese tennis star. ABC's Monica Sar Abdi has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, with all eyes on Beijing for the upcoming Olympics, it's the question that hasn't gone away. Where is Peng Shuai? The timing really couldn't be better for those of us who care about the story. On Tuesday, Tennis Australia reversing its ban on T-shirts, drawing attention to Chinese player Peng Shuai, whose safety and well-being is being questioned after she seemed to disappear from the public for weeks after accusing a former Chinese official of sexual assault. Allegations the Chinese government have refused to even comment on. On Friday, security for the Open asking activists to remove T-shirts reading, Where is Peng Shuai? Tennis Australia is saying at the time that while Pong's safety is our primary concern, we don't allow clothing, banners or signs that are commercial or political. And we'll have much more of this developing mystery coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. So here's a question. What should you do with your old laptops, printers and all those cell phones so they don't end up in the landfill? Well, 12 on your side is Marilyn Moritz looks at how to clear the clutter and maybe make a little money. When it's time to upgrade the latest, greatest tech, here's the dilemma. I don't know what I'm going to do with all this old junk. But your electronic trash could be someone else's treasure. There are a lot of different online marketplaces that make it really easy for you to sell your old computers and devices. You might want to do a little bit of research ahead of time to make sure that you're pricing it appropriately. Even if it's broken, someone may want it. On eBay, this MacBook Pro is selling for $350. If you don't want the hassle of listing an item yourself, online buyback sites like Buyback World and Gazelle give you a quote. When you accept the offer, you ship your gadgets to them with a prepaid shipping label. You can also donate your old electronics. If you have a pile of old computers and tablets and cell phones just collecting dust, these can be really valuable to a family that is and able to buy them. This website, Digitunity, will match you with local pre-qualified organizations that will give your old computer new life. Donating your old cell phone or tablet to Cell Phones for Soldiers helps them provide international calling cards to troops. And the Hearing Aid Project will refurbish your old hearing aids for low-income people. Whatever you do, don't toss your old tech in the trash. Check out Earth 911 to find a local recycling location. And remember, before you give up your old electronics, be sure to erase the hard drive. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Good reminder there. Look outside with Trans Guide. Things were looking good this morning. There's a look there at I-35. A couple of people out there traveling early this morning. Way better than yesterday morning. We yes. had that fog and mist. I had a few sprinkles on the windshield this morning, but that was up in the hills of far away Stone Oak. With, I mean, a couple <laughs> of patches of fog here and there. Yeah, I mean, you saw the kind of the, the um, fuzz around some of the street lights out yeah. there. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, a little sprinkle, maybe a speck of mist here and there. So, so those clouds kind of returned yesterday and they, they hung around in my part of town almost all day yesterday. Yep, I mean, the morning all of a sudden it cleared right out there and then, you know, it was still fairly decent right around noontime, early afternoon. And yeah, clouds came back in, put a lid on any sort of heating and it was kind of on the, the chilly sort of side. And that's the way it's going to be staying today as well. We've got plenty of clouds out there right now. And again, a, a hint of uh, some fog, just sort of an indication there's a bunch of humidity out there relative to the temperature. And we may see actually, a, you know, like Mark said, a, a speck of mist here and there. Yesterday, uh, high temperatures only made it to 59 degrees. Then where there was some more sunshine throughout the day, obviously mid upper 60s, even low 70s. And then today with all those clouds hanging around here, that's really going to put sort of, like I said, a lid on any sort of clearing. So we're going to be staying about mid and maybe some upper 50s around most all of the area. Here's the uh, satellite picture right now. And there's that kind of dark shade of gray. That's the low clouds. They are very, very stubborn this time of year. And there's a lot of moisture coming in here, uh, not only at the surface, but also upstairs. So that's going to help to keep a lot of clouds around. Yeah, it doesn't mean we won't see a little bit of sunshine thrown in here and there, but basically just cloudy skies. And that's going to be the situation then going into tomorrow. Temperatures are going to be pretty consistent the next couple of days, right around mid 50s today, tomorrow, as well as on Friday. Now, tomorrow night, there is a front moving on through here. It's not going to be a huge blast of cold air. Uh, but it will help to get rid of some of the humidity and drop those dew point temperatures down. And then also a couple of showers around here. I think this is kind of a 
a little bit of a broad brush, but uh, just one or two showers late tomorrow night, early morning hours by Friday. Actually, by the morning commute time, most anything should be out of the picture. And then we'll start to clear out during the day on Friday. And it's going to be a good looking afternoon on Friday. And then weekend is setting up still to be absolutely fantastic. So we have a little bit of humidity around here. Here's the front that moves on through, gets rid of the, the dew point temperatures, gets rid of some of the humidity. So that sets us up for a dry weekend, which means well, dry weekend, unfortunately, as far as rain is concerned, but uh, cold, low temperatures and then big warm up throughout the day. So we're going to be seeing those um, swings of about 30, close to 35 degrees between the low and the high over the weekend. Plenty of sunshine. Yeah, if you want to make some outdoor plans, nice little drive up into the hill country, something like that this weekend, it is going to be perfect for it. Then the humidity starts to come back in here again on Monday, and that may actually bring with it another well, unfortunately, small chance for some rain and not even big rain amounts, but you know, a little bit here and there for Monday morning. All right, 51 degrees today at noon. Pretty much cloudy skies. I'm going to call it mostly cloudy throughout the day. Uh, a couple of peaks of sunshine here and there. 55 for a high temperature, almost 10 below normal. Roughly the same situation tomorrow. Maybe a, a hint cooler in the morning. Then as that weak front moves on through here, it's going to squeeze out a couple of showers late tomorrow night, early, early on Friday. High temperatures, mid 50s through the rest of the work week, school week, and then we start off close to freezing on Saturday morning, mid 30s, Sunday morning, chilly, cold mornings and beautiful afternoons, plenty of sunshine. Uh, another chance of rain, maybe by Monday, perhaps uh, Wednesday of next week. Looks like perhaps a potent front by the uh, end of next week, too. Well, get ready for that, but a beautiful weekend in the meantime. Yeah, weekend is going to be absolutely fantastic. Not a bad end to the month of January. Mm -hmm. Except it is dry. That's it is the only dry. downside to it, so that kind of you know, goes without saying. Thank you, Mike. 451, about 50 degrees. And still ahead, while Elton John is postponing two shows in Texas, plus it's almost the end for an ABC sitcom. And here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, two, three, nine, Fireball four. Daily four numbers, three, seven, zero, zero, Fireball two. Cash five, six, 15, 17, 20, 30. And your Mega Millions, three, 12, 38, 53, 58, Mega Ball 13, Mega Plier three. Good luck. An ABC sitcom is coming to an end. Plus, Neil Young threatens to pull his music off Spotify. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Nice to meet you. As the show Blackish Please. inches closer to an end, many are sharing memories of the Emmy winning ABC sitcom. Yara Shahidi was just 14 years old when she started on the show as the eldest daughter Zoe, and she says her pretend brothers and sisters have become real brothers and sisters over the years. Like, of course, I'll miss my entire TV family, but I don't know if people understand the, the, the sheer proximity of me and my TV siblings, of we were in this school trailer that was not very big, which meant we literally spent our lives growing up three feet away from each other. She since moved on to her own show, Grownish. Season four premieres tomorrow night on Freeform. Neil Young telling Spotify, it's Joe Rogan or me, in a letter he posted online and then deleted. He told his team to pull his music off Spotify, that he doesn't want to share the platform with Rogan, who he accuses of spreading potentially deadly misinformation about COVID-19 and the no, vaccine part through Rogan's popular podcast. You're, you're... No response from Spotify. I'm still standing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elton John testing positive for COVID-19 just a week after restarting his farewell tour. His team says his symptoms are mild and he was vaccinated and boosted. And the 74-year-old singer says he hopes to be back on stage this weekend in Arkansas. He had to postpone two shows in Texas. And comedian and talk show host Ellen DeGeneres with a birthday today. She's 64. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now, 456 and about 49 degrees out there. Still ahead, an update this morning, the ongoing tensions with Russia. Why President Biden says there could be some U.S. troop movements in the near term in Eastern Europe. Plus, big changes are coming to the SAT exam for college. Details coming up in Tech Bytes. And Trans Guide, right now, we're not seeing the fog and mist that we saw yesterday morning. That's a great thing because the morning commute was an absolute mess. We'll get an update from Stephen on how things are shaping up so far coming up. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Coming up next, new details regarding a shooter that left one man dead at an MLK celebration. 
I'm ABC's M1 in Washington. The U.S. and NATO allies are ramping up their efforts to get a diplomatic solution between Russia and Ukraine. But the U.S. says they're still preparing for all scenarios. The latest coming up. Vest, jacket, sweater, sweatshirt, doesn't matter. It's uh, almost required this morning, though. We've got a brisk breeze out there yet again after another front moved through the area. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, the 26th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, definitely chilly out there. I went ahead and warmed up the car before coming into work today. Smart play, 49 degrees. Mike, uh, how much cooler do we get this morning before the good old sun comes up? Well, not uh, that all that much. I mean, temperatures are going to stay fairly steady relative to these numbers. The temperatures, we've got a, a fair amount of humidity out there but not enough to really give us the widespread fog like we had yesterday. So we're at 50 right now. And then you got that dew point down there in the bottom number at 44, 80% humidity. Again, it's not outrageously high humidity, but enough moisture out there. It's that, that sort of damp chill. So I say kind of sneaks down the back of your neck just a little bit. And uh, really throughout the rest of the morning and going into early afternoon, temperatures don't move all that much and will only top off right about the, uh, the mid 50s later on today. So we're going to be about 10 degrees below normal. And the aquifer went down three tenths of a foot yesterday and still mountain cedars almost thinking that maybe mountain cedar season finished up a little bit early. So we're on the, the downward slide, but haven't had a whole bunch of that recently. And that and mold are both low. Of course, the updated count is going to be coming out a little bit later on this morning. As far as the uh, moisture in the atmosphere upstairs in the atmosphere, you can see we do have a fair amount of it. There's that darker shade from yesterday, although, you know, that usually gives us some beautiful blue skies out there. We just couldn't get rid of those darn low clouds yesterday. And then we got a lot of moisture upstairs. So it, it will be, again, tough to get rid of the clouds today. Uh, maybe a couple of peaks of sunshine here and there. Patchy fog, just one or two little spots here and there or a hint of it. Sometimes it looks like there's a little bit of that uh, sort of fuzz around the street lights this morning. And then later on today, mostly cloudy. Again, only mid 50s for a high temperature. Rest of the week, about the same temperatures, lows a little bit lower, but we're still going to stay just about mid 50s jacket weather all week long and a couple of showers going to be possible late tomorrow night into Friday. Another front moves on through here. Not a huge blast, just kind of gets rid of some of that humidity. But what that's going to do is set us up for a fantastic weekend. Cool, cold mornings down around freezing each day and then sunny and warm in the afternoon. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos on this Wednesday morning. Good morning, sir. Anything going on? Hey, good morning, Mike Osterhage. Right now, not a whole lot going on. Very quiet compared to what we saw yesterday, but uh, we are still seeing some issues out there. Check out 35 uh, at Vaughan Army, we do have a stalled vehicle out there. Very dark, but we're seeing that traffic is moving through these lanes pretty slowly at this hour. Uh, also, what I'm seeing based on this shot at Trans Guide, it looks like this could be a big rig of some sort. Again, very dark right now. So, of course, you want to give yourself plenty of room and give that driver plenty of room to get the help they need so that way everybody can get to where they need to be on time and safely. But overall, the morning is off to a steady start. Yesterday, we saw a whole bunch of issues. Not sure if that was related to that fog, but Right now, the weather is pretty much clear, but we can see that traffic is definitely picking up there off 35. This is in the northbound lane, so just be on the lookout for that. Overall, again, we're pretty off to a green start on the screen here. Not a whole lot of issues out there. We are seeing some stalls detected around 281 and 410. We'll check those out in just a moment, but the travels into San Antonio won't be anything too big right now. It's just checking the system right now. Very quiet, so green start to this Wednesday morning. One last look here, though, 35 at Von Ormy is going to be the problem spot right now, but I'm assuming this will be resolved as the morning does go on. Guys. Thank you, Steve. And a peaceful gathering on MLK Day interrupted with gunfire. One person dead, four others hurt. After days of searching, police say they have their suspect behind bars this morning. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live now. And Jonathan, what have you learned so far? Well, Stephanie, we know the 18-year-old involved in the shooting was arrested by San Antonio police on Tuesday at an apartment complex on Salado Creek Drive. That's on the city's northeast side. Take a look at your screen. That's O.L. Wallace. Police say he opened fire at a gathering on MLK January 17th. We're also learning more about what happened that day. According to an arrest report, a mother told police she recognized Wallace from an apartment complex where she used to live. She told investigators Wallace was walking suspiciously with a gun under his arm before he started shooting. And he also reportedly talked to her child before he started shooting. 
Right now, it's still unclear the motive of this shooting. We do know 61-year-old Johnny Mobley Jr. was killed and four others were hurt. Now, Mark Stephanie, police say uh, Wallace will be charged with one count of murder and four counts of aggravated assaults with a deadly weapon. We'll be following this close, uh, case closely and updating you as more information is received. Reporting live from Public Safety Headquarters, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Jonathan. Frustration and disappointment as friends learned of the release of a murder suspect connected to the murder of a taxi driver in Wincrest back in 2019. Adam Zirsi was found shot to death in his vehicle in January of 2019. And in October, Wincrest police announced the arrest of a suspect. But last week, the district attorney's office informed them the case would be dismissed for lack of evidence. The victim's friends are expressing disappointment with the DA's office and Wincrest police. Imagine, now, now there's three orphan children. Imagine you're the one wiping the tears away from the three orphan children. And, you, and Adam was the sole provider for an entire village back home. A DA spokesperson said the case against the suspect released can be filed when there's more evidence. When Crest Police said the investigation is ongoing. Investigators in Guadalupe County want to know who put two bodies in an abandoned oil tanker trailer. A tax shot worker found the bodies of two men on Monday. That's near Seguin off Highway 90. We don't know the names of the men found or how they died. If you have any details about the case, call the Guadalupe County Crime Stoppers at 1-877-403-TIPS. Bear County leaders just approved millions of dollars in overtime pay, 69,000 hours to be exact. Sheriff Javier Salazar says it's for workers at the county jail, and he told county commissioners deputies are leaving or retiring. Others are getting sick with COVID, and point blank, they are spread thin. So the money is a must. He acknowledged his office is probably going to go over budget on OT, but also said other sheriffs in Texas have the same problem. Other sheriffs and I have, have, have talked about how, what, what can we do to keep that from happening. We know we're going to blow out our budgets to a certain extent. It's just a matter of trying to minimize that. And Bear County had more than $8 million budgeted for jail overtime, but county staff say right now it's on track to spending almost $14 million. Today, France is set to host de-escalation talks today with Russia, Ukraine, and Germany. This as Ukraine acknowledges the threat of a Russian invasion and receives a new shipment of American military equipment. ABC's M. Wynn is tracking the story in Washington. Fearful of a Russian invasion into Ukraine, the U.S. and NATO allies are ramping up efforts for a diplomatic solution. Today, France will hold a high-level meeting aiming to ease tensions between the two countries. But President Biden warning the 8,500 U.S. troops on standby to Europe may be deployed sooner than later. We have no intention of putting American forces or NATO forces in Ukraine. But uh, we, I, as I said, there are going to be serious economic consequences if he moves. The president also warning the U.S. may personally sanction Russia's President Vladimir Putin himself if Russia invades, on top of other severe economic trade sanctions. If he were to move in with all those forces, it would be the largest invasion since World War II. It would change the world. The administration now stepping up military support for Ukraine. Our Ian panel is on the ground as more American anti-tank and bunker-busting missiles arrive in Kiev. This is the latest delivery of U.S.-supplied weapons and ammunition to the Ukrainian government. It's meant to send a signal of support to the people of Ukraine, but also a message of deterrence to the Kremlin. The acting U.S. ambassador to Ukraine confirming that support. That the Ukrainians are ready and capable of defending their country, uh, and we will be there to help them. And we don't think that Ukraine should have to live with a loaded gun to its head. But the Kremlin insisting they won't attack, even as more than 100,000 troops are gathered near the border. These new images show the Russian military conducting drills across the region. The U.S. is finalizing plans to help Europe with natural gas, should Russia cut off supply amid current tensions. President Biden will hold talks with Qatar on Monday in an effort to send some of that nation's vast supply of gas to Europe. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. 509, about 49 degrees. And still ahead, Samsung is confirming when they'll show off the latest versions of some of its Galaxy products. And up next, how the city of San Antonio is reopening its art gallery and historic market square to the public for the first time since way back in 2019. And taking a look outside with live cam, it is 
a chilly 49 degrees this morning, so go ahead and be prepared with that jacket. We'll be checking in with Mike later on. Just about 513, two steps forward, one step back. The city reopening its gallery in historic Market Square to the public for the first time since 2019. However, could City Council also cut funding for future art projects? The Centro de Artes Gallery will open today. The latest exhibit is meant to tell the stories of dozens of local artists who are also immigrants. They represent 12 different countries, and all of them were paired up with experienced artists associated with the New York Foundation for the Arts as part of a mentorship program. It's a platform the city says is important. That is the heart of what we do, giving artists a place to display their works, especially artists who have historically, through time, uh, been excluded from spaces. You can visit the Centro de Artes Gallery for free. It's open Wednesdays through Sunday, Sundays. And time now, 513 and about 49 degrees out there. Still ahead, Google showing off a new system for tracking Chrome browser users. And details on the college SAT exam transitioning to an online format. Did you know that your fabrics trap more than just odors? They also trap bacteria. Better get Febreze Fabric Antimicrobial. Its water-based formula penetrates fabrics to kill 99.9% .9 of bacteria, and it eliminates odors. Spray it on your furniture, your rugs, your clothes. Wherever bacteria and odors hide, you can even sanitize your car seats. For a deeper clean and a freshness you'll love, try Febreze Fabric Antimicrobial. Join Planet Fitness today for zero enrollment. Zero, like a bagel. It's only $10 a month, cancel any time. Enjoy tons of equipment for zero enrollment. Zero enrollment! And 10 bucks a month. That makes me so happy. Feel spectacular in 2022 for zero enrollment, $10 a month, cancel any time. Deal ends February 2nd. Your shipping manager left to find themselves, leaving you lost. You need to hire. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. Indeed Instant Match instantly delivers quality candidates matching your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash hire. Welcome back and good morning. If you're just now joining us, Samsung has confirmed the date for its next Unpacked event, where it's expected to unveil the next Galaxy devices. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Samsung is set to unveil its next generation Galaxy S devices. The company says its Unpacked event will be held online two weeks from today. The rumored Galaxy S22 Ultra is expected to be the star attraction. The phone is the likely successor to the Galaxy Note. Google has a new system for tracking people who use Chrome. The new system will track up to five interests based on users' web activity, but it eliminates cookies, which websites currently use to monitor your activity. Finally, an all-digital SAT is coming in 2024. The college entrance exams organizers say going online will make the test shorter and easier to administer. Calculators will be allowed for the entire math section. Students still have to take it in a supervised location. So I guess we can say bye-bye to the number two pencil. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Did you tell Rooney how lucky she is now that oh, it's she has, be a little simpler? She has no concept. Yeah, she <laughs> yeah. hasn't had to, you know, really, you know, do a lot of those tests yet. So sure, I know, I know it's a little early for it, that it'll, conversation. It'll, it'll be very fast, though. I agree. Yeah, it would help. Okay. What if we can we go back and take it again and improve our scores? <laughs> yeah, like a, a second a second shot at it. Yeah, because yeah, I did I did horrible on all those kind of entrance. Exams. Maybe it was all the the yeah. pencil marking. Well, I liked my design, but it turns out those were wrong. Five eighteen, about forty nine degrees here, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all in good company here, Mike. Right? I mean, I I, I didn't do well in the SATs. What? I mean, do you really think you could go back and improve your score? Oh. I, I, at <laughs> this point, maybe we could do a group PSAT, like a practice SAT, and see who has the best. Uh, it would um, be interesting to see if you remember all that. No, I think I, I lost some know. knowledge over the yeah. years. <laughs> Listen, I may not be able to do the SATs, but I can talk traffic right now. Let's get a quick look at the roadways. 37 at Houston, uh, quiet right now. So there's really not a lot going on. We told you earlier about a stall that's happening off 35 northbound at Von Ormy. This is still out there. We're not seeing any delays or slowdowns because of this, but as always, still very dark outside, and there are a few folks out there traveling up 35, so make sure you are taking it easy. Overall, though, the morning has been quiet, so that gives us a chance to talk some construction. Quick reminder for our 
friends up here towards 1604 on the northeast side. There will be some bridge work going on today. Now this started on Monday and we'll be wrapping up this Friday. We still got two days to go. Starts from nine in the morning to three in the afternoon. That has led to the northbound to southbound frontage road turnaround to be closed right at Pat Booker Road. So again, this is some bridge work, so be prepared for possible slowdowns during that morning rush, but hopefully that won't really impact the drive time. Pushing out of the map, we're still in good shape. You can see green on the screen, not looking too bad. But again, one last look at Transguide US 90 at 410, 281 at Isom. Just remember to take it slow on the roads. Guys, wonder if the ACT is going to follow suit. <laughs> Oh. oh, I'm sure. Probably. But then, but then, you know, a lot of colleges nowadays aren't, it's not the be-all end-all mm -hmm. to get in. They, they don't even require those Many anymore. schools, that's what I was just going to say, they yeah. don't require them. It, it's kind of trending that way a little bit more. But mm -hmm. maybe other tests will follow suit. That's true. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's not going to be any math in this newscast, though. So. Oh, okay. Yes. Not in the don't weather you, part? Don't have to worry about that, <laughs> folks. So, uh, we do have, <laughs> but we will be talking a bunch of numbers thrown at you. So a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning and 50 degrees. Normal low temperature is right around 42. Do the math. Anybody? Eight degrees above normal. Thank you very much. No calculators, Mark. Um, and we got mid 40s in portions of the hill country right now. A little bit of a breeze. And so therefore, yes, we do have a slight bit of a wind chill in spots. Feels like 41 at Bernie stage. But I mean, not anything just ridiculously cold out there. However, it is that damp cool because we've got some extra humidity and a little bit of fuzz around the spot, the uh, street lights and, um, you know, maybe a patch or two of fog here or there. But it's nothing like nothing at all like what we had around here yesterday. Today. Here's the satellite picture and yeah, there is as you can see some low clouds hanging around here. Um, they're going to be tough to kind of get on out like they have been the past couple of days. Also, we've got a little bit more moisture upstairs in the atmosphere, and so that's going to help to keep the clouds around. Yes, a peak or two of sunshine, but don't really count on a whole bunch of it, and that's going to help to keep temperatures down in the mid 50s later on today. And once again, the, the G whiz factor four below in Chicago, 14 below at International Falls. The wind chill is 30 degrees below zero. So it feels like it is 80 degrees colder than what it is here. So just to do a little bit of math there. And uh, most of the country is definitely on the cold side, well below freezing uh, wind chill temperatures right now. Now, as far as what's going to be happening in the next couple of days, most of the cloudy skies, pretty consistent temperatures right around mid 50s for highs today, tomorrow, as well as on Friday. And then late tomorrow night, there is a front that's going to be moving on through here. Now, this model is one of those that kind of, you know, broad brushes it, as I say, but a couple of showers are going to be possible. Now, don't look at this and say, oh, there's going to be huge, you know, rain all around the area. This is just that, that chance for some rain. Pretty much it's going to be on the light side. This would be late tomorrow night, early, early on Friday. And I think most of it is actually going to be out of here by about commute time on Friday, maybe be a straggling shower. Then we clear on out and that's setting us up for this fantastic weekend around here. As you can see, nothing but uh, sunshine all weekend long. Then another chance of rain again, kind of broad brush. Uh, this is going to be Monday and then we'll clear out again on Tuesday and it looks like by Wednesday, another small chance for some rain. And as of right now, that batch of rain would be accompanied by a pretty potent front moving in here by the latter part of next week. 51 degrees today at noon, cloudy skies and yeah, a couple of peaks of sunshine here and there, but I think we're just going to stay pretty much cloudy throughout most of the day. 55 for high temperature. Same thing tomorrow, same thing on Friday. That front moves through, squeezes out a couple of showers here and there. Once again, it's not going to be, you know, huge rain event at all. And then we clear on out for the weekend. Weekend, make some plans right now. Outdoors, cold mornings, beautiful afternoons. Another small chance for some rain on Monday. You've got that look on your face. You looked up an SAT. <laughs> no, Hardy, our producer for this newscast, sent us an equation, and my oh head my just exploded. I can't even read it to what you. It? So, oh, the sample four question? x minus y equals three y plus seven. Oh no, no, no! I, you don't have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to prove that he can. Here, you just look that over and see if your head doesn't explode, and we'll see if well, we I can. can't even read it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I had to. I had to zoom in. Please. I don't know. A whole different problem, right? Yeah. Here, use these. Four no, then I can't see. 523, 49 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, Bob Dylan announces more tour dates and a preview of the sky is everywhere. Here are more numbers that are not complicated. Mm -hmm. Lotto, pick three, 239, Fireball four. Daily four, 3700, zero, zero, Fireball two. Cash five, 6, 15, 17, 20, 30. And your Mega Millions, 3, 12, 38, 53, 58, Mega Ball 13, Mega Plier 3. Good luck.
Bob Dylan going on tour again, plus Jake Gyllenhaal is starring in a new film. Here's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Fresh off selling his back catalog to Sony Music, Bob Dylan is heading back out on tour. The next set of 26 concerts in his ongoing roadshow begins March 3rd in Phoenix and crisscrosses the southern U.S., ending April 14th in Oklahoma City. The audience's imagination should switch on. Jake Gyllenhaal is ready to cut and run. He'll star in a thriller by that title about thieves who use speedboats to rob super yachts. New Republic Pictures won a bidding war for the script. Gyllenhaal is set to produce as well as star. No one in school gets it. I don't think it's possible to get it unless you're in it like we are. The Sky is Everywhere, based on the young adult novel, stars Grace Kaufman as a teenager who's grieving after the sudden death of her older sister. She finds herself torn between the new boy in school, who shares her love of music, and her sister's former fiancé, who shares her feelings of grief and loss. The Sky is Everywhere debuts on Apple TV Plus February 11th, just ahead of Valentine's Day. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. There is someone... Uh, time now, 528 and about 49 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, what some of the nation's top doctors are saying about efforts towards a universal coronavirus vaccine. And the popular Simply Lemonade is stirring in a little alcohol. We're going to tell you about the new flavors you'll find at the store. Making headlines this morning, the nation's leading infectious disease expert talks about the development of a universal coronavirus vaccine. And taking a look outside with the live cam this morning, we're starting at 49 degrees, and for some reason it feels even chillier than that. Good morning to you. It is uh, Wednesday the 26th. The I always 26. write a, myself a note because I can't remember. <laughs> I know, because well, our rundowns are super small. Everything's smaller these days. <laughs> so Mike, is that a function of, uh, of the fact that we're up so early or advanced age? Mm. The latter, I think. The latter, thank yeah. you. Maybe the font it's a is still the same size, it's just that you need to, you know, Move it a little. There. Thank you yeah. for validating my truth. <laughs> hey, I tell you, look at somebody's phone. It's like, oh, why do you have that giant size font? <laughs> So I can anyway, see it. Uh, we do have the uh, you were talking about why it's uh, chilly outside, even though temperatures are in the 40s. It's because of that bottom number We're at 50 as a matter of fact right now. But the humidity is kind of high. And so when you have that extra moisture in the atmosphere, it actually conducts the heat away from your body. So because dry air is a very, very good insulator, moist air is not. And that's why it's always that little bit of a, a chill on a morning like this. Plus, we have a slight bit of a breeze out there and uh, temperatures all around the metropolitan area are very mild and and pretty consistent and not really going to be moving all that much because of a little bit of extra humidity out there and also the cloud cover. Mold and Mountain Cedar are both on the low side. Throughout the rest of today, 51 at noon. A uh, couple of peaks of sunshine, but I'm just kind of leaning more toward the cloudier side today. Um, again, a, a break here and there. And then temperatures will definitely stay cool, 55, and get used to that because that's where we're going to be the next couple of days. We do have a weak front moving on through here. It may squeeze out a couple of showers then late tomorrow night, early on Friday. Friday. Rain, unfortunately, is not going to be a, a big deal with this, but it will set us up for a spectacular weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. All quiet on the roads? All quiet and terrific traffic. That means there's not a whole lot going on out there. US 90 at 410, 281. We're seeing just one or a few vehicles out there this morning. Given that it's 533, we don't normally expect to see a whole stretch of traffic on these trans guide cameras, but nonetheless, you got to take it. It's easy out there. Enjoy the ride to work this morning there, wherever your destination takes you. 37 at Fair Avenue. We're just seeing, again, light traffic and empty roads in most of these trans guide camera shots, but there are still some issues out there there while the morning is getting going. Let's go ahead and take you to 35 because that seems to be a problem area for a few drivers. Right now we do have a stall that's been detected off 35 northbound at Von Army. I was checking the trans guide cameras. It does look like there is still an issue out there, so make sure that you're moving over, slowing down because that driver is still experiencing some trouble. Taking you a little bit further up 35 in those southbound lanes this time at right at Southwest Military, another stalled vehicle. So you can see right now this seems to be the trending pattern at this hour, but that can quickly change when more people 
people get out on the roadways. Nonetheless, just take it easy out there. Make sure you give those drivers plenty of room. If your travels are taking you through San Antonio right now, you're in luck. Green across the board looking pretty good right now. Coming in from I-10 and Bernie in those eastbound lanes with 24 minutes to downtown San Antonio. 281 southbound Bulverde. Right now, you're in 27 minutes, so not too bad there. And 25 on 35 coming in those southbound lanes from New Braunfels. One last look at Trans Guide and around town. Things are shaping up to look nice. We'll continue to talk construction coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio fire crews had a tough time getting to a fire inside a home on the city's southeast side late last night. Happened around 930 in the 4300 block of Roland Avenue east of Southside Lions Park. Firefighters arrived to find a fire in the kitchen. They described the home as a hoarder house because of all the stuff inside. Crews say they had a tough time getting to the fire at first. Fire spread into the basement of the home before firefighters were finally able to access the blaze and put it out. No one was hurt and at the time and no one, uh, no one was home at the time rather, so no one was hurt. So far there's no word of what caused the fire. Another increase in hospitalizations among COVID-19 patients in Bear County. 1,277 people are in the hospital, 286 are in the ICU, and 119 are on ventilators. 15 more deaths were also reported. Meanwhile, the nation's top health experts say COVID-19 will probably never really go away. However, as CNN's Brett Conway reports, there are conversations happening right now about different ways to prevent it. COVID-19 vaccine dose one. Two, three, and four? Well, maybe. It's one of the many questions health experts are trying to answer as the Omicron variant continues to spread. For fully vaccinated adults, cases are often mild or asymptomatic. Still, the country is now averaging more than 2,000 deaths every day, slightly higher than the Delta variant peak last September. Pfizer says they're manufacturing an Omicron-specific vaccine, and they're testing it now. But it begs the question, what about other variants? If other variants emerge, this Omicron-specific vaccine may not have adequate coverage against future variants. We need to have a more pan-coronavirus vaccine, one that really doesn't matter which is your variant, it'll still have efficacy. Something Dr. Anthony Fauci is expected to talk about at the White House today. He says there's already been significant work done. There's a lot of investment to develop next generation of vaccines, particularly universal coronavirus vaccines. Vaccines that wouldn't just cover the variants that cause COVID-19, but other coronaviruses. The importance of developing a pan-coronavirus vaccine becomes even more apparent for what inevitably will be the emergence of future pandemics. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Wild volatility in the stock market this week has put heightened scrutiny on the Federal Reserve's meeting later today. With high inflation squeezing consumers and businesses, the Fed is expected to signal that it will raise its benchmark short-term interest rate in March. That would be a sharp reversal from the ultra-low rate policies that imposed after the pandemic recession started two years ago. To further tighten credit, the Fed plans to end its monthly bond purchases in May. And later this year, it may start reducing its huge stockpile of Treasury and mortgage bonds. President Biden and NATO allies are preparing for the possible Russian invasion of Ukraine. Biden says if that happens, it would be the largest invasion since World War II. Amid the tensions, France will host a high-level meeting today with officials from Russia, Ukraine, and Germany in an effort to de-escalate the crisis. In Ukraine, more shipments of U.S. military equipment have arrived to shore up their defenses. Some books that belong to his late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg are up for auction. Bonhams is selling more than a thousand of the books online, along with other items Ginsburg owned. Several of the books have inscriptions from others on the U.S. Supreme Court. Some of her old textbooks even have notes in them. The auction includes uh, gifts from Gloria Steinem and Annie Leibovitz. And time now, 538 and about 49 degrees out there. Up next, how Simply Lemonade is becoming a boozy beverage. And a quick look outside with live cam this morning. It's chilly out there at 49 degrees. Uh, we're going to go ahead and check in with Mike to see what we can expect today, but also looking to a nice weekend. We'll be right back.
And welcome back. It's 541 in your morning consumer headlines. The red hot housing market might finally be starting to cool. Home prices rose 18.8% year over year in November. That's down from a 19.1% increase in October. These numbers are according to the S&P CoreLogic Cage Schiller U.S. National Home Price Index. Despite slowing gains, November's increase was still the sixth highest in 34 years. Prices in 19 cities also saw all-time highs. Phoenix, Tampa, Las Vegas, Dallas, and San Diego topped the list. Some new Oreo flavors are coming to a frozen food section near you. The brand transformed the classic chocolate sandwich cookie into frozen delights. Some of the new products include ice cream bars, uh, cones, and sandwiches. The Oreo ice cream will come in 14 and 48 ounce tubs. The full frosty product line will be in stores nationwide by March. And Simply Lemonade is about to become more complex. Coca-Cola is teaming up with Molson Coors to make it an alcoholic beverage. Simply Spiked Lemonade will have 5% alcohol by volume. It will come in strawberry, watermelon, blueberry, and regular flavor. The lemonade will be available in 12 or 24 ounce cans. Interesting. Yeah, lots of interesting flavors there. <laughs> Something for everybody. Yeah, that's true. 542, about 49 degrees. And still ahead, we're checking in with the Animal Defense League and the furry little pet that needs a new home. Oh, it is little lap dog time. Michelle's here mm. from the Animal Defense League. Who is this little one? This is Teacup. So she is very small. Granted yes. her name. Um, so she's a little Chihuahua mix. She's, we es estimate her as about three years old. Okay. And she's available for adoption at our Nacogdoches campus. She's a little shyer um, and really just looking for a lap to hang out on. Oh, poor little baby. Yeah, yeah it's okay. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. And this is going to be perfect. Maybe being on the shy side, you know, once she gets used to it, but maybe not an overly rambunctious, uh, you know, bunch of kids, but she'd be perfect little, uh, little lap dog if you're just looking for a companion, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. She's such a sweetheart. All right, what y'all got going on? Well, you know, Super Bowl Sunday is going to be around the corner before we know it. And we are really grateful to be a part of a Super Bowl um, golf tournament that we are beneficiaries of. Oh, really? Yes. So it's going to be at the Canyon Springs Golf Club. Mm -hmm. And um, all proceeds go to benefit the Animal Defense League. And if you're interested in participating in that, it's going to be before the actual Super Bowl game. Then you can visit our website, adltexas.org, to get more information about it. And it's a really great way to just be active and get involved with animals as well. Oh, wonderful. Okay, well, if you'd like more information on that, of course, or this little baby here, you yeah, good little snuggle bunny there, just head on over to the Animal Defense League, 1130 under Nacogdoches, or the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo, or just give them a call. Thank you, dear. Thank you. What a sweet girl. I know, very, very calm. Very nice. 546. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. We saw some problems there on I-35 and South Cross. Yeah, roads have been relatively calm, but we have been seeing issues like this on our TransGuide cameras. Now, this is 35 at South Cross. I want to bring your attention right to the screen here because we are seeing that this looks like an 18-wheeler that's blocking the exit to Southwest Military. Uh, this is not causing issues for drivers, but if you need to exit, then that could be a problem. You can see that traffic's trying to navigate through there, but we have some road flares that are set up right now because first response are working to assist that driver and hopefully move that 18 wheeler out of the way and that way it will open up the exit there to Southwest Military. But we're going to start first here at 35 northbound Yvonne Army. That stall has been there throughout the entire morning. It's not been causing any issues and I was just checking the corner of my eye. Trans guide camera doesn't show that there's any first responders out there assisting this driver. So you got to take it easy out there. Bringing you up to where that issue that we saw on trans guide that stall that's been detected there. That's in the north southbound lanes of 35 right at Southwest Military. Again, the exit ramp is blocked there right now. And as we look ahead, as the day does get going, be prepared for some slowdowns. Just a quick reminder, there will be some road work happening here on 37. It started on January 17th, but should be wrapping up on January 28th. It will begin at 7 in the morning to 7 in the evening. That's led to Commerce Streets and southbound to northbound turnaround to be closed. Overall, morning's been off to a steady start, but with issues like this, you just got to take it easy out there, guys.
Great. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, definitely. You said you saw a little bit of mist this morning, right? I did. Mark did. I did not. Yeah, um, in northern uh, Bear wow. County. Well, on you? your way in? I didn't mm -hmm. see any mist, no. Yeah, right after I left the house. Okay. Yeah, just kind of watch out for that. I mean, we've yeah. got a little extra humidity out there. Maybe, you know, a, a little patch of fog here or there. Not bad. And, and obviously, visibility is pretty good out there at the airport. But, you know, if there is just a, a hint of it, a hint of mist out there, we do have a nice breeze in parts of the area. And so that's giving us a slight bit of a wind chill. Now, the formulas don't come into play when you're at 50, but obviously with a breeze, it feels a little cooler than that. Wind chills down to 41 at Bernie Sage. Nothing just, you know, jumping off the page as far as cold temperatures or even cold wind chill temperatures, but it is that damp chill I keep talking about because of the extra humidity out there. All right, this is the water vapor imagery going back 12 hours. Of course, yesterday morning things cleared out nicely and we had those blue skies. That's that darker shade of gray that we had. And then of course the, the clouds moved back in during the, the afternoon. And then we do obviously have more moisture coming in here upstairs in the atmosphere along with these low clouds. This is the actual satellite picture. So it's going to be first of all, tough to get rid of these low clouds. And then if they tend to kind of spread and break up a little bit, we've got that moisture upstairs in the atmosphere. So pretty much what that means is we're going to have a lot of clouds today, some sunshine thrown on in here, and that's going to obviously help to keep temperatures down as well. So here's what's going on as far as let me jump back here and uh, do this graphic once again going in toward the weekend. We've got nothing but clear skies around here, and that's going to be the situation on Sunday. Now, once we get into Monday, there is a weak front that's going to move on through again. Chance for a little bit of rain, but not a great chance, and, and it's not going to be a, a huge rain event, unfortunately, by any stretch. And that would just last uh, maybe into the first part of the day on Monday. We'll clear back out on Tuesday. Clouds come back in here on Wednesday, and then another shot at a little bit of rain on Wednesday, and then we'll clear out behind that. So here's what's going to be going on. First of all, in the upper level steering winds, we have this uh, little bit of a glitch right here. That's a front that's going to move through. Then tomorrow a night in to uh, Friday morning, give us a slight chance for uh, a couple of little sprinkly showers around here. Not much. We get this nice northerly flow for the weekend. That's what brings in perfect weather for the weekend. Then we're watching that low off to the west. That's the one that's going to move through Sunday night into Monday. Little chance for some rain around here. That'll get on out. Then pretty decent chunk of cold air is building on in here, and that's going to be going into the mid to latter portion of next week. And that could be a fairly significant front coming through here as far as temperatures then by roughly this time next week, Wednesday into Thursday of next week. Today, 51 degrees at noon, cloudy skies, and then a high temperature up to 55. So we'll still be about 10 degrees below normal. Pretty much cloudy skies. Uh, yeah, a little bit of sunshine, some sunshine thrown on in there. Tomorrow, about the same situation, slightly cooler in the mornings, and then only mid-50s in the afternoon. We clear out Friday, chance of rain late Thursday into early Friday. Weekend looks great. Cold but in the morning, nice in the afternoon. I was going to say not enough rain, though, for January. I was just thinking the same thing. I mean, we're still way, way behind. And we were behind, it seemed like, going into the holidays. You know, the aquifer's been doing okay, mm -hmm. just because a lot of people aren't watering this time of year. But, right. yeah, it's been very, very dry for a long time. And, you know, it's these little hints at some rain, but just not enough moisture to really. But And it's living up to, it's a uh, La Nina um, time right now. So that was going to be a milder and drier winter. So. All right. Thank you, Mike. 552, about 49 degrees. Police work together to lift an SUV off a trapped driver, and the town's clever ideas are for the birds. Those stories are coming up next. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, two, three, nine, fireball four. Daily four, three, seven, zero, zero, fireball two. Cash five, six, 15, 17, 20, 30. And Mega Millions, three, 12, 38, 53, 58, Mega Ball 13, Mega Plier three. Good luck. Police officers and a bystander in Delaware saved a woman pinned under an SUV by lifting the vehicle off of her, and it was all caught on camera. A warning some may find the video disturbing. Newcastle County officials told affiliate WPVI the 70-year-old became pinned after exiting the vehicle before putting it in park. After a neighbor's attempt to use a jack failed, the rescuers used their combined strength to free the woman. She was later taken to a hospital and treated for injuries. Officials commended the officers and bystanders, saying their quick thinking and physical actions protected the woman from further injury and possibly death. 
the FBI and officials in St. Louis, Missouri would like to wish you a happy Explosive Ordnance Recovery Week. Oh, it's a thing, all right. It's an effort to safely remove and dispose of potentially dangerous military ordnance in the community. Seeing the stuff uh, people find in swap meets, you find it uh, in your uncle's basement. It's something that's been handed down from years. It started off with a bang as video of a Civil War cannonball being safely destroyed was showcased. Authorities say the effort isn't to prosecute anyone, just to keep people safe. Finally, people in Sunnyvale, California are avoiding bombs, but these are coming from a massive murder of crows that have taken over the town square. The Hitchcockian headache has been an issue for some time and has inspired many ideas to fend off the flock, such as laser pointers and even faux crow scarecrows. We should just have that as Sunnyvale's mascot and really lean into it. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we are bundled and prepared for the longest stretch of coldest weather, at least in parts of the Great Lakes. So we'll be talking about how deep those dangerous wind chills go, but also watching the potential for that storm to develop off the coast and impact big cities come Saturday morning. So we will have the latest. I'm going to be tracking it and you'll see so much more coming up right here on GMA. KSAT web team found the stores with the biggest winnings when it came to lottery tickets and scratch offs for all of last year. They have them all mapped out for you in Bear County and several surrounding counties. You can take a closer look at KSAT.com and we hope you do. Still to come on GMSA in our next hour, our Spurs get a big win against a division rival. We'll have the highlights of their victory over the Houston Rockets and cleanup is underway overnight after a house fire east of uh, town. We'll have you uh, tell you why crews rather had a hard time putting the flames out and trans sky. We're not dealing with the fog and mist on a widespread scale like we saw yesterday morning, but we still have this uh, some flashing lights there on the 35 South Cross vicinity. Stephen will have more coming up. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. We're learning new details regarding the shooting that took place over an MLK celebration. What we know coming up next. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. The U.S. and NATO allies are ramping up their efforts to get a diplomatic solution between Russia and Ukraine. But the U.S. says they're still preparing for all scenarios. The latest coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're starting at a mild of 49 degrees, but don't be fooled, you will still need that jacket. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hey there, good morning. It is Wednesday, January 26th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, it feels like January this week, I think, for the most part. Yeah, we see how the month rounds out because all of that is in Mike's extended forecast. Starting off this morning, though, with an update. Yesterday was very foggy. Yep. We has that dense fog advisory for a good part of the morning drive. And really I, nothing this morning. A couple of little patches here and there, but there's enough humidity. And you said you saw a couple of little like some mist. Something like that. So don't be surprised if you see that this morning just because of some of that extra humidity. But uh, yeah, nothing like what we had yesterday around here. So, you know, could be a little damp spot on the street here and there. Otherwise, good visibility looking off to the east there at 410. And uh, out in the hill country, temperatures are on the mild side. We are above normal. Normal low temperature right now is 42 degrees. But again, like Steph was saying, with that humidity out there, it's that damp chill. So it kind of sneaks down the back of your neck. Mold Mountain Cedar are both on the low side. Updated count is going to be coming out. A little bit later on this morning and temperatures are pretty much going to be staying steady throughout the rest of the morning. Thanks to the cloud cover. Thanks to some of that extra humidity. Then the wind is going to be picking up out of the northeast about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Plenty of clouds today. Limited sunshine thrown on in here right around 50 51 degrees today at noon and then a high temperature. Yes, it will definitely be on the chilly side about 10 degrees below normal with a high up to 55. Get used to that. We're going to be staying right around mid 50s the next couple of days. Slight chance for some rain. Not a huge rain event that's going to help to close out the work week and then we are setting up for a near dare I say perfect weekend. It's going to be spectacular details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic authorities Steve Cavazos haven't had a lot to talk about this morning. Have you not really Mike uh, with just a few stalls that have been a problem on the roadway, but nothing too major. But if situations like this still persist, then we could likely see some of those issues start to extend out to other drivers. Now what we're looking at is a stalled vehicle there along 35 at South Cross is a view from Transguide. Talking to our friends over there. They're letting us know that this is an 18 
look at that's actually blocking the exit there. So as I mentioned, we've been seeing problems like this that haven't been causing a lot of other issues. But as I mentioned, it was we start to see more people out on the roadways that could pose a bigger problem a little later on this morning. But you can see that the driver is uh, receiving some assistance from first responders. So make sure to give them some room there. Let's go ahead and take you to the map and show you where that's pinpointed at right there along those southbound lanes at Southwest Military, uh, not causing delays just yet. But as you saw in those trans guide cameras, there are more folks out there this morning. So take it easy. Good news is as we jump out and show you a wider look at the map, we're still in pretty much good shape. It looks like a green spider web, but you're not going to get tangled in any traffic at this hour. So that's some good news. And right now, if your travel is taking you through San Antonio, well, we have those inbound times for you. If you're traveling in from Seguin, you're still in the luck. Pretty green there with 29 minutes in those westbound lanes. 22 minutes if you're traveling from Lavernia and those northbound lanes on 87. And right now, 29 minutes coming in from Flotusville to the downtown area. Not bad right now, but situations like this, you got to watch out for. We'll continue to keep an eye on it and let you know how that impacts your morning drive. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New details and developing story we've been following closely since last week. San Antonio police say the man involved in a shooting at an MLK gathering is waking up behind bars this morning. Now we're getting a closer look at that suspect and what investigators are saying about the case. Jonathan Cotto staying on top of this story joins us live. Jonathan, what can you tell us about the suspected shooter? Mark Stephanie, that 18 year old was put in handcuffs on Tuesday at an apartment complex on Salado Creek Drive on the city's northeast side. Take a look at your screen. Just a few hours ago, we received a photo. We received this mugshot of O.L. Wallace. Police say he opened fire at a gathering on MLK Day, January 17th. We're also learning more about what happened that day. According to an arrest report, a mother told police she recognized Wallace from an apartment complex where she used to live. She told investigators Wallace was walking suspiciously with a gun under his arm before he started shooting. He also reportedly talked to her child just moments before he opened fire at the gathering. Right now, it's still unclear what drove Wallace to fire off his weapon. We've learned 61-year-old Johnny Mobley Jr. was killed and four others were hurt. Now, police say Wallace will be charged with one count of murder and four counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Reporting live from Public Safety Headquarters, Jonathan Cote, KSET 12 News. Friends of a murder victim expressing their frustration following the release of a suspect connected to the incident. Adam Zierce was a taxi driver who was shot and killed while parked in a thrift store parking lot over on Windcrest. Back in October, Windcrest police now announced the arrest of a suspect, but just last week, the district attorney's office said the case would be dismissed due to lack of evidence. Victims' friends are disappointed with that decision. Imagine now, now there's three orphan children Imagine you're the one wiping the tears away from the three orphan children. And, you, and Adam was the sole provider for an entire village back home. Now, a DA spokesperson said the case against the suspect who was released can be refiled when there's more evidence. Bear County leaders just approved millions of dollars in overtime pay, 69,000 hours to be exact. Sheriff Javier Salazar says it's for workers at the county jail. He told county commissioners deputies are leaving or retiring. Others are getting sick with COVID and point blank, they're spread thin. So the money is a must. He acknowledged his office is probably going to go over budget on OT, but also said other sheriffs in Texas have the same problem. Other sheriffs and I have, have, have talked about how, what, what can we do to keep that from happening. We know we're going to blow out our budgets to a certain extent. It's just a matter of trying to minimize that. And Bear County had more than $8 million budgeted for jail overtime. However, county staff say right now it's on track to spending almost $14 million. Amid intensifying tensions in Eastern Europe, France is set to host de-escalation talks today with Russia, Ukraine and Germany. This comes as Ukraine acknowledges the threat of a Russian invasion and receives a new shipment of American military equipment to shore up their defenses. ABC's M. Wynn is tracking the story. Good morning. The U.S. is sending a clear message. The NATO alliance is united in its response to Russia's aggression, with State Department officials saying now is not the time for panic, but rather for preparation. Fearful of a Russian invasion into Ukraine, the U.S. and NATO allies are ramping up efforts for a diplomatic solution. Today, France will hold a high-level meeting aiming to ease tensions between the two countries. But President Biden warning the 8,500 U.S. troops on standby to Europe may be deployed sooner than later. We have no intention of putting American forces or NATO forces in Ukraine. 
But uh, we, uh, I, uh, as I said, there are going to be serious economic consequences if he moves. The president also warning the U.S. may personally sanction Russia's President Vladimir Putin himself if Russia invades, on top of other severe economic trade sanctions. If he were to move in with all those forces, it would be the largest invasion since World War II. It would change the world. The administration now stepping up military support for Ukraine. The acting U.S. ambassador to Ukraine confirming that support. The Ukrainians are ready and capable of defending their country, uh, and we will be there to help them. But the Kremlin insisting they won't attack, even as more than 100,000 troops are gathered near the border. The U.S. is finalizing plans to help Europe with natural gas should Russia cut off supply amid current tensions. President Biden will hold talks with Qatar on Monday in an effort to send some of that nation's vast supply of gas to Europe. M1, ABC News, Washington. In your morning consumer news, optimism in the economy. Nonprofit group The Conference Board says its consumer confidence index is still at a high level despite pulling back a bit in January. And concerns over inflation have actually declined for the second straight month. General Motors making its single biggest investment ever in Michigan with plans to spend nearly $7 billion to overhaul a factory to make electric pickups and build a new plant for making batteries. And supply chain problems continue to impact General Electric's bottom line. Fourth quarter revenues fell 3%. Right now, GE is in the midst of a move to split itself into three separate companies. Wednesday morning time check, 6.09, about 49 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, dozens of people are still missing after a boat capsized off the Florida coast this past weekend. We're going to have the latest on the search efforts. And do you have kids that will be applying to colleges soon? There are some changes coming to the SAT you'll want to hear about. We have that story just ahead. And taking a look outside with live cam, it's feeling like January. It's not freezing, but it's still 49 degrees. We'll be right back. Welcome back at 613. So some big news for high school students this morning. The SAT is about to get a major overhaul. You will not be hearing pencils down for much longer. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has details. A big change is coming to the exam once deemed essential for college admissions. The SAT is moving away from paper and pencil and going entirely online. Fewer students are taking the test, so they're trying to adapt to that. Test takers will be allowed to use their own laptops or tablets, but they will still have to take the test at a monitored location or in school. And the digital SAT will be shorter, two hours instead of three. One plus one always equals two, so part of the, the, the adjustment will be getting students more familiar with how to navigate the test on a computer, but at the same time, the content is gonna be important, so they have to know that first and foremost. The tests have been criticized for bias. Critics saying the questions disadvantage minority and low income students. The college board, which administers the test, says the new SAT will cover a wider range of topics, saying it will be easier to take, easier to give, and more relevant. The changes come after more colleges and universities made the test optional for admission. A recent survey finding nearly 80% no longer require standardized test scores from students. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. The digital SAT rolls out in 2024. And time now, 614. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos and see how the roadways are looking. Not too bad right now. We are getting a look around town 281 at Hildebrand. We're seeing just a few more vehicles out there this morning. A little bit of a shaky camera there from Trans Guy, but overall, the morning's not been too bad. We've been seeing a few folks out there. However, we do have some stalls there off of 35 that have been there throughout the entire morning. Hopefully, that's not going to be causing any issues as uh, the morning does go on. But uh, look at the traffic there of 37 at Houston, we're starting to see more people out there than what we saw earlier. So let's go in and see if we're spotting any buildup on our maps just now. Uh, let's go ahead and right start here off of 35 Southbound at Southwest Military. Now what we know here is that this is an 18 wheeler that's actually blocking the exit there to Southwest Military. However, we're not seeing any delays just yet uh, in any of those these directions. So that's some good news. Here's the tricky thing though. Later this morning, there will be some actual construction going on in this area, not too far from 
there were some bridge repairs that will be taking place a little bit later at nine in the morning that will last until five in the afternoon. According to text dot that will lead to the single southbound main lane closure at Southwest Military Drive. So hopefully this stall does get cleared out in time before text dot crews head out there. And as I look at our map, I'm starting to see a small buildup in those southbound lanes that could be because of that stall vehicle that we spotted there pushing you out of the map. We still see mostly we're in good shape. We're not spotting any huge delays in any of the areas that people travel this morning. So that's the silver lining here, or we should say green lining in this case. But right now, this is going to be the problem spot off 35. We'll continue to watch that. But overall, traffic has been tranquil for this Wednesday morning. Guys, not too bad for Wednesday. Thank you, Stephen. Let's see if Mike Ostrage is uh, able to get the school bus rolling this mm -hmm. morning. <laughs> there he <Yay>! is. <laughs> I, I remember the keys to the bus this morning. Anyway, uh, 48 <laughs> degrees. Temperatures are going to stay fairly steady. And 48 doesn't sound bad, but uh, there is that all that moisture out there. So it's that damp chill. Plus, I've got the you know mention of a patch or two of fog. There's a little bit of fuzz kind of around the uh, the street lights. So just watch that in a few low lying areas. Not nothing at all like what we had yesterday. And then 55 for a high temperature today. Most of the cloudy skies. It will definitely stay on the the cool side. And here's a look outside right now and a good visibility out there looking off to the east unlike again what we had around here yesterday all right we were talking just last half hour about the lack of rain and going back in through winter now actually meteorological winter is january uh February and or excuse me, December, January, February, beg your pardon, but even going back into late fall, we have not, I mean, below normal rainfall. What is this? About maybe two and a quarter inches of rain all the way going back to the first of November, well below normal each and every month, including this month. October, yes, was on the, the wet side and not to look gift horse in the mouth at all, but that all pretty much came in about a four day span right around the middle of the month. We had some really, really hefty downpours and that put us above normal. But yeah, for the past uh, three months, including this month, it is definitely on the dry side and there's not really a heck of a lot of rain in the forecast at all. So we do have a slight breeze out there right now. Wind out of the northeast about five, ten miles per hour. And so there's a bit of a wind chill, just enough to add that little bit of a kind of a bite to some of these that damp cool out there. Plus a lot of moisture upstairs in the the atmosphere and then we've got the clouds down here at the surface so it's going to be tough to get rid of these clouds the low clouds are always tough to break up and then again we don't have all that you know dry air upstairs so we will keep a lot of clouds around today and limited sunshine that's going to help to limit temperatures as well so just mid 50s again for a high and then Tomorrow, a lot of clouds hanging around here. Late tomorrow night, we get a front moving on through. That may squeeze out a couple of showers early on Friday, late to late, late overnight Thursday into early Friday. Then that's going to clear on out, and that sets us up for a spectacular weekend. Cold mornings, nice afternoons, just great this weekend. 51 degrees today at noon, cloudy skies, and again, mostly cloudy. A little bit of sunshine is going to be peeking on through here. 55 for a high temperature today and tomorrow, Friday, about the same situation as far as high temperatures, maybe a little bit cooler in the mornings, and then we are going to be seeing a lot of sunshine over the weekend. Freezing Saturday morning, definitely freezing in the Hill Country both mornings, close to it here in town both mornings, plenty of sunshine, and then another chance at some rain Monday, but again, it's nothing that's really, you know, jumping off the page as far as any rainfall amounts. Another small chance of rain, perhaps by Wednesday of next week. Mm -hmm. Nothing really jumping off the, the page, though. It looks like it could have a really, really potent front as it's looking right now by late next week. All right, so maybe in February we'll see some rain later. Mm. <laughs> Doubtful. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. 619, about 49 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you why some of the biggest names in baseball will not be going to the Hall of Fame. I'm getting vaccinated with Prevnar 20. So am I, because I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. I'm asking about Prevnar 20 because there's a chance pneumococcal pneumonia could put me in the hospital. If you're 65 or older, you may be at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. 
Prevnar 20 is approved in adults to help prevent infections from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Even if you've already been vaccinated with another pneumonia vaccine, ask your doctor if Prevnar 20 could help provide additional protection. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. The most common side effects were pain and swelling at the injection site, muscle pain, fatigue, headache, and joint pain. I want to be able to keep my plans. That's why I chose to get vaccinated with Prevnar 20. Because just one dose could help protect me from pneumococcal pneumonia. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about getting vaccinated with Prevnar 20 today. And welcome back at 623. New controversy surrounding the Baseball Hall of Fame. Some of the biggest names in the sport have once again fallen short of receiving the prestigious title of Hall of Famer over lingering questions about their past. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. This morning, some of the biggest stars to ever play baseball have been denied one of the game's highest honors. Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, and Sammy Sosa all falling short of the votes needed to enter the Hall of Fame in their final year of eligibility. All three with ties to what's known as baseball's steroids era. On paper, the three look like shoe-ins. Sosa is one of the few men in the game's history to hit more than 600 home runs. Clemens ranks in the top 10 all-time for wins by a pitcher and won seven Cy Young awards. And Barry Bonds is the all-time record holder for home runs with 762. But despite their record achievements, they've all been accused of using performance-enhancing drugs, something all three deny. Clemens even told Congress he never used drugs. I have never taken steroids or HGH. Clemens reacting to last night's announcement, writing, I didn't play baseball to get in the Hall of Fame. Only one former player was selected last night. Yes! Red Sox slugger David Ortiz, known as Big Poppy, elected to the Hall in his first year of eligibility. His charisma and batting prowess were on full display as he led the Red Sox to a World Series victory in 2013 just months after the Boston Marathon bombing. The Boston fan favorite tested positive for performance enhancers in 2003, but in 2016, League Commissioner Rob Manfred questioned the validity of those results. David Ortiz got in because he was a great player and a big personality, and that is a winning combination in Hall of Fame voting. Bon Sosa and Clemens could all still technically be elected to the Hall of Fame by a committee that selects overlooked veterans. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, New York. Staying with sports for a moment, the Silver and Black badly needed a win last night, and they got it done in Houston against the struggling Rockets. DeJounte Murray and Yaka Proto combined for 37 points in three quarters to help the Spurs coast to a 134-104 victory over the Rockets. The win comes after the Spurs drop consecutive games to Brooklyn and Philadelphia at home. Next up for the Silver and Black, they'll welcome the Memphis Grizzlies to town at 7.30 tonight over at the AT&T Center. Go Spurs, go! Time now, 625 and about 49 degrees out there. Still to come in our next half hour of GMSA, we're going to tell you about the push for variant-specific coronavirus treatment. And are you doing a home makeover? We'll tell you about some ways to take the stress out of home renovating. And a quick check of the roads with TransGuide. Uh, things looking a little held up there at Highway 90. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos very soon. Welcome back to GMSA, waiting for the sun to come up and much clearer this morning compared to our Tuesday morning. And we have big problems on I-35 up New, New Braunfels. Again, we'll talk to Stephen in just a moment. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, the 26th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, huge problems out there. But for now, grab a jacket when you head out the door. Yeah, the breeze is not helping, is it, Mike Oster? No, we've got a little bit of a breeze out there and then you got all that humidity as well. So it's a damp chill and then the breeze kind of just actually pushes it down the back of your collar. Mm -hmm. So keep your collar turned up this morning and uh, we don't have any problems with the visibility. That's good news. Mark said he saw a little bit of mist earlier this morning. Don't be surprised with that just because of some of that uh, extra humidity out there. So we've got a temperature of 49 degrees, dew point 43. So relatively um, fair amount of humidity out there. And again, that's what adds to that damp chill and wind out of the northeast at about to nine miles per hour. 45 is the wind chill right now in town. 41 Bernie stage and 45 also up the road at Canyon Lake. Mold and Mountain Cedar are both on the low side. The updated count is going to come out in about uh, 45 minutes an hour or so and throughout the rest of today. So chilly. Um, 
maybe just a patch of fog here or there. There were a couple little reduced visibilities around the area. Nothing big, but if eh, you know, low lying area could see a, a little patch of fog here, there perhaps even some mist and then a lot of clouds hanging around here today. I think limited sunshine mid 50s for a high temperature. So Jack, it's going to be a good idea all day long and for the rest of the week. It's going to stay cool. A couple of showers going to be possible late tomorrow night early early on Friday. Then we're going to start to clear out and boy, we are setting up for a fantastic weekend. Cool should have said cold mornings because we'll be down to close to freezing and definitely freezing in the hill country and then warm afternoons and plenty of sunshine. Details on the weekend in just a couple of minutes. Drag authority, Steve Cavazos, big problems on 35. Yeah, uh, looking like a parking lot out there, Mike. Right now we have 35 at loop 337. You can see that we are seeing a stretch of traffic out there. Vehicles not really moving at all. Uh, what's bad here is that this is in the southbound lanes of 35 coming out from New Braunfels, so we know this is a heavily traffic corridor and this could likely lead to some big delays for drivers that are trying to make their way out of town right now. You can see that we do also have flashing lights out there indicating a pretty heavy first responder presence this early in the morning. And as you can see, based off this traffic, people may be stuck there for quite a while. Let's go ahead and take you to the map and see what that's looking like because we're seeing that detected in the southbound lanes of 35 at Salms Road. You can see also that stretch of traffic a little bit further back with the red and orange in those southbound lanes of 35. This is definitely going to be a problem for people at this hour of the morning because we know more folks are out there. The morning's just getting started and we're seeing problems like this already causing issues, so not a good sign. Let's take a jump back here into town, though. We still have that 18 wheeler that was blocking the exit there off Southwest Military Drive at 35. Not seeing that anymore, but I'll check and make sure that that's not blocking any of the traffic that's been out there. We saw a small stretch of yellow there that was indicating a slowdown. Looks like that's quickly improved and hopefully that driver has received some assistance. Let's Let's show you what the morning's looking like here with a wider scope of the map. Looks like we may have a new stall near Walsham Road up toward 35, but the big problem is going to be there coming out from New Braunfels. Check out these inbound times right now. Still 28 minutes from the down from New Braunfels to the downtown San Antonio area, so nothing too bad just yet, but it's still very early on. So we'll go ahead and take a look at this crash here off 35 again. Loop 337 it looks like it's already causing a lot of issues for drivers out on the road. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Right now, we want to get to late breaking news on the far west side of town where there are reports of a stabbing. Katrina Weber joins us now live from the 8000 block of West Military Drive. Katrina, what do we know so far? Good morning, Mark. Yes, uh, police have confirmed there has been a stabbing. A woman about 40 years old or so who was stabbed inside her second floor apartment here at the Castle Ridge Apartments. Police, in fact, are working in that apartment right now, Building 15 here. Uh, they say that the woman's children are the suspects in this case. They believe those three were the only ones in the home when this happened. They say the woman called 911 around 5 o'clock this morning, reporting that she had been stabbed. They arrived here and found out that not only had she been stabbed, but also beaten with something, possibly a baseball bat. Uh, police say that the woman's 16-year-old son was still in the apartment. Uh, they took him into custody, but her 12-year-old son had run off, and so they also went out searching for him and did catch him nearby. They say he is a suspect as well. They believe that the two sons did attack their own mother, leaving her in critical condition, but police still don't know the reason for this, uh, this violence. They say that the mother was conscious but not quite able to talk uh, that much and give them a lot of information about what happened, and they are waiting uh, legally before they can be able to question those two minor children. Reporting live on the far west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Austin police searching for an 80 year old woman with a cognitive impairment. Officials say Arminda Guetta was last seen Tuesday morning. That's according to a silver alert issued by DPS. She's five feet, two inches tall, 225 pounds, grabs gray hair and brown eyes. She's, we're told she was last seen in Austin, a white 2015 Kia Soul with Texas license plate 7KTNK. Officials believe she poses a threat to her own health and safety. If you have any information, please call Austin Police at 512-974-6624. Topping your other morning headlines in England, two more people now in custody as the investigation continues into that hostage standoff up in Colleyville near Dallas. Investigators say 44-year-old Malik Faisal Akram, a British national, died after holding four people hostage 
at Congregation Beth Israel during an 11 hour standoff earlier this month. UK counterterrorism investigators have been helping US authorities look into the incident, which is being treated as a hate crime and an act of terrorism. Last week, two other men were arrested in England. The incident has put Jewish communities across the U.S. on high alert. The Anti-Defamation League says attacks on Jewish people have been on the rise. President Biden and NATO allies are preparing for the possible Russian invasion of Ukraine. Biden says if that happens, it would be the largest invasion since World War II. Amid the tensions, France will host a high-level meeting today with officials from Russia, Ukraine and Germany in an effort to de-escalate the crisis. In Ukraine, more shipments of U.S. military equipment have arrived to shore up their defenses. U.S. Coast Guard rescue crews searching for 39 people after a boat capsized Saturday night off the coast of Florida. A good Samaritan told authorities he rescued a man who was clinging to a capsized boat about 45 miles east of Fort Pierce Inlet. The survivor said he'd left Bimini in the Bahamas with 39 others Saturday night. They encountered severe weather, which caused the boat to overturn. He said no one on board was wearing a life jacket. Coast Guard officials believe it was a human smuggling attempt. They're still searching the waters for possible survivors. Another increase in hospitalizations among COVID patients here in Bear County. 1,000 uh, 1,277 people in the hospital, 286 in the ICU, 119 are on ventilators, and 15 more deaths have also been reported. And right now, health experts are looking for variant specific COVID treatments. Yeah, Pfizer has announced they'll begin testing a COVID shot specifically targeting the Omicron variant in adults. It's similar to what happens with the flu shot each year. Texas Biomed is using a variant specific mindset in the development of a new monoclonal antibody treatment that would treat the Omicron variant. It targets a piece of the virus that the virus cannot really modify because it's super important to the virus in order to function. So it can't mutate in that area. It has to hold steady. And that monoclonal antibody treatment she mentioned is still in the preclinical stage. So doctors are not sure when it will be ready for use. Out of your money and a crucial decision today that the markets will be watching very closely. Wall Street has been on a roller coaster lately with wild swings up and down because of uncertainty about interest rates. Add to that the supply chain crisis that's delaying goods and services and making them more pricey for consumers. Today, the Federal Reserve is expected to take action. ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi has the details. This morning, a major change likely to come to your money. The Federal Reserve is expected to announce its raising interest rates for the first time in three years in response to soaring inflation and an overheated economy. Let's not get too nervous. Rates are still historically low. They're near zero percent, but it could be enough to, to rattle investors uh, and consumers. The rate hike would come as soon as March. Some economists say the Fed is moving too late to fight inflation. Others say there's a risk the Fed could act too aggressively. While that will eventually stabilize prices for consumers, it also increases the cost of borrowing and makes it less desirable to buy risky things like stocks for people here on Wall Street. And that has led to this volatile market we've seen recently. Overnight, stock futures were up slightly after another volatile day on Wall Street. The Dow plunging 800 points at one point. It's the degree of sensitivity that market participants have uh, to what is going to be the new rate environment. Experts say supply chain issues are another factor the Fed is considering before raising rates. And when you're dealing with shortages of semiconductors, making the economy go slower is not the best way, right, to actually address those kinds of issues, those kinds of shortages. Across the country, the supply of crucial semiconductors is now alarmingly low, according to a Commerce Department survey. It found companies using the computer chips are down to fewer than five days of inventory, a sharp drop from the 40 days of inventory that were typical in 2019. The auto industry has been hit hard by the chip shortage. But General Motors Tuesday announcing the single largest investment in the company's history. It's pouring nearly $7 billion into electric car and battery production at sites in Michigan. As for interest rates, some experts predict the Fed could raise rates as many as four times this year to curb inflation. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. And time now, 639 and about 49 degrees for now. Good news if you're planning to remodel your home. After the break, some simple things you could do to elevate or rather alleviate some of the stress. 
Been there, built that. Home improvement can be a fun project that can bring couples together, but can also bring a ton of disagreements. In this morning's Ask Angie segment, RJ Marquez talks through some of the challenges of renovating while in a relationship. Making decisions with your significant other can be challenging, especially when it comes to the home. The good news, there are some simple ways to navigate home improvement and keep everyone happy through the process. Handling a home project on your own can be stressful enough, but add in different styles and priorities from others in your family or friends, and it can be even more stressful. So the first step is to align on priorities. Then do your research and understand what's involved, including getting multiple quotes from pros. Once you have all the information, you can align your priorities with all stakeholders and set a budget that you can actually stick to by considering all the different costs involved. When working your way through the project, remember that compromise is key. Go into it mentally prepared for it. Compromise will come into play in style or design, budgets, priorities, and even in who you hire to complete the project. In addition to compromise, communication is critical. Before you start your project, make sure that you and your partner understand how each of you handles the common causes of conflict, including project control, design, finances, and anxiety. Discussing all these elements in advance will help you to set expectations and have a positive experience overall. The best home improvement projects to work on with a partner are the bedroom, kitchen, and living room. If you can, start small. Learn how each other works on smaller, easier, and less expensive projects before tackling the bigger renovations that will have more of an impact on your home. Taking care of your home is a necessary part of home ownership. But if you're not the only one living in the home, expect that others are going to have an opinion on it. Try to take projects and divide up responsibilities so that everyone can feel involved in the process. The parts of home care that people tend to dislike most, dealing with the office, yard, or landscaping can especially lead to conflict. So consider leaving some of these less glamorous tasks to the pros. That way you and your family can focus on the more fun parts of the project. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Oh, it would be awesome as if, you know, you run into those snags with your significant other. Mm -hmm. RJ just comes over and kind of gets everybody to calm down and walks you through <laughs> it. He's like, look, 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 guys, we can do this both he's, ways. He's yeah. so even tempered. He would be the perfect yes. uh, marriage counselor. I think so. <laughs> I'll, I'll let him know uh, before the 9 a.m. show. <laughs> Good idea. 646 right now. Go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Big mess there at 935. Well, we're hoping drivers are calm, especially if they're driving through 35. Right now, we are taking a look, a closer look at the scene that's definitely caused a lot of issues for people that are heading south of New Braunfels. You can see that we do have a stretch of traffic that's been out there for quite a while. Doesn't look like much has changed, but our friends at Trans Guy getting us a closer view. It does look like this could be on the exit ramp somewhere, but still very dark to make out. We are working to get more details as the morning goes on, but if you are just waking up and you have to travel south of New Braunfels, be prepared for slowdowns right now or seek an alternative route. Just avoid the area right now because we're starting to see that just continuing to stretch in those southbound lanes right at 35 at near Psalms Road. This is not uh, a place that you're going to want to travel, especially in the next few moments because you could get caught in that mess that you just saw on that trans guide camera. Let's take a jump back here to town because stalls just seem to be the issue here in San Antonio. Right now, 35 northbound at Ritterman Road. We had a stall detected there. That's caused some restricted flow a little bit further down. We have a new stall off 35 southbound at Cesar Chavez Boulevard. So you can see these corridors have been the problem spot this morning. Haven't spotted anything anywhere else just yet, but the morning still relatively young. We know a lot of people are out there, though, so be sure to be cautious right now. We are also seeing about a 30 plus minute drive time from New Braunfels to the downtown San Antonio area, but it doesn't look like this mess is going to clear anytime soon. But of course, we're going to continue to track that throughout the morning. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Mike looks like the sun hit the snooze button this morning. Yes, it did. Well, we've got all those clouds hanging around here and uh, yeah, they do a pretty good job obviously blocking out the uh, the sunshine. Uh, sun's officially not going to come up for about another oh, 45 minutes or so and uh, I don't think we're going to see a heck of a lot of it today. Maybe a couple of peaks kind of squeezing on through these clouds. But we have a lot of these low clouds and yeah, there have been a few breaks here and there, but you see that kind of 
this shading, dark uh, and kind of gray shading on there. That's the low clouds being picked up on the uh, satellite picture. And uh, yeah, now this model tries to have a little bit of clearing off to the east today. Still keep the clouds off to the west, so perhaps some sunshine off to the west there. But I, I just think we're going to keep a lot of clouds around today, like you know, like yesterday where we had all of a sudden some blue skies and the clouds move back on in here. It will uh, pretty much be on the, the cloudier side today, and that's going to help to keep temperatures down. Tomorrow, lots of clouds, and then we do have a front moving on through here. This is going to, it's not going to be a big blast of cold air at all, but it will try and squeeze out a couple of showers as it moves on through. And that's going to be overnight into the early morning hours of uh, Friday. And then by drive time, most of that's going to be on out of here. And then that's going to set the stage for a really good looking weekend. Uh, as far as dew points, measure moisture in the atmosphere. So we see a little bit of an increase and kind of almost kind of steady with the, the dew point temperatures. And then that front comes in, dries out the, uh, the atmosphere. And then those dew point numbers start to come back up by Monday. That's when we get more clouds moving in here and another chance of rain, but not a great shot at rain. Here's the longer range computer model through the weekend. Nothing showing up around here. A couple of showers on Monday. And again, this is one of those kind of broad brush sort of computer models. Uh, it's not like we're going to see all this very heavy rain, maybe a little bit more further off to the northeast. We'll clear out by Tuesday. Clouds move back in on Wednesday. Another small chance for a few showers around here on Wednesday. And that is going to be then right ahead of another pretty potent front as it looks right now, going to be coming through about uh, Thursday of next week. 51 degrees today at noon. A fair amount of clouds, some more sunshine off to the east. 55 for a high temperature. And it's just going to call it mostly cloudy skies. Some sunshine at times. And jacket weather all day long. Same thing the next couple of days. It is going to be breezy on Friday. And behind that front, we'll have that small chance for some rain late tomorrow night, early Friday. Weekend looks just wondrous. <laughs> and then just making words up here to describe it because yeah. it's going to be so good. Cold mornings, beautiful afternoons, uh, small chance of rain on Monday. And then we'll have another fairly decent front coming through, it looks like, as of right now by this time next week. You didn't make it up. That's a real word. Oh, word. Know, but, yeah, yeah, looks good. Yep. It's wonderful that you used Wondrous this morning. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Very much. <laughs> we appreciate your vocabulary. 650 right now, 49 degrees. And do you need some extra money tomorrow on GMSA? We're going to tell you about some of the best jobs in 2022. All right. So the sun's had a few more minutes to try to shake things off and wake up out there. There are some of the jobs. The guy staring at the screen. And <laughs> there, and there is clouds in the sun. No, the sun hit, hit smooth, snooze again. We'll yeah. be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we are bundled and prepared for the longest stretch of coldest weather, at least in parts of the Great Lakes. So we'll be talking about how deep those dangerous wind chills go, but also watching the potential for that storm to develop off the coast and impact big cities come Saturday morning. So we will have the latest. I'm going to be tracking it and you'll see so much more coming up right here on GMA. San Antonio police are investigating an attack on a woman in her own home, allegedly by her own children. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. We're here in the 8,000 block of West Military at the Castle Ridge Apartments. This is where San Antonio police are investigating that case. Right now, keeping watch on that second floor apartment where this happened around five this morning. They're waiting for crime scene investigators to come in and uh, be able to have a look around and collect evidence. But police tell us they got a call around five this morning from the woman who was attacked, telling them she had been stabbed. They arrived here and found out she not only was stabbed, but also was beaten, probably with a baseball bat, they tell us. They identified her two children as the suspects. They found a 16-year-old son still in the apartment with her, but her 12-year-old son had walked off, according to police. They did find him nearby. They have both those children in custody right now. The mother has gone to the hospital in critical condition, and police are waiting to legally be able to question the children. They say that the mother, although she was able to call 911, she was not able to talk a whole lot and offer information about what led up to this earlier this morning. Reporting live on the far west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Looks like we have some progress there of 35 right now. Traffic is moving, but you're going to be sitting there for a little while. That crash may have just cleared out, but we're still seeing a stretch of road, uh, traffic that's building up there of 35 southbound right at Selms Road, Mike. Plenty of 
clouds this morning and it is cool out there. We've got temperatures of 49 degrees, a little bit of a wind chill to deal with, and then we're just going to keep a lot of clouds around throughout much of the day and a high temperature of only 55. Thank you guys. Yeah, thank you for joining us today. Uh, yeah, definitely grab a jacket. That's a good idea. And we'll see you back here at nine. Have a great day. Good Morning America is coming up next right here on KSAT 12.